going there. And I'll show this uh, television here. The TV is still on. Not sure what the picture is like. But we've operated a television set for you. Uh, we've operated a 3 amp electric drill, 120 volt drill. We've operated a um, vacuum cleaner for you. We have uh, measured the voltage both uh, on and off uh, the, the converter circuit. Um, maybe I can find a better picture of something else. Yeah, the point is that it does operate, obviously. And the current output is enough to operate everything, including the addition of a 100 watt light bulb. No, maybe not. Yes. And this thing does get very warm. The unit has been in operation so far for 11 minutes. And we're going to let it continue to go for a bit longer. The units in operation tend to generate a little bit of heat, and to prevent our, our electric tape from melting, we generally don't like it to get too hot. And back off a little bit, Michael, to get everything here in the picture. If you don't mind. Uh, this is rated at uh, three and a half amps continuous, so its draw will be more than that when it's first turned on. Uh, and you know, this is three amps even, 120 volts, 60 cycle AC. You might want to. Now, if you speak to a battery engineer, someone who designs portable power systems using batteries, lead acid, or whatever. He will tell you that there are no high voltage, high current batteries available. Uh, a battery capable of operating this kind of equipment for this period of time would be considerably larger and would certainly last only a few minutes. Um, Again, it cannot be picking up any kind of microwave or magnetic uh, influence of any kind to operate the 100-watt uh, light bulb and uh, run the inverter and operate the television set. It would be highly unethical to do anything of that nature. If you ask engineers, uh, generally speaking, they will respond by telling you that, uh, that uh, this kind of power uh, is simply not available with, uh, with any kind of a... Um, uh, portable portable power supply. The draw on the television set is 1.2 amps at 120 volts. The output, by the way, from the inverter, and I will show you that the output is is different than the sine wave you would receive from a conventional uh, wall socket. So it measures at 103, but in reality, it's the voltage that the appliance sees is probably over 120 volts, actually. The unit has now been in continuous operation for 14 minutes. Getting everything in the picture. I mean, those, those, just the just three pieces here. The unit, these units uh, can operate uh, while you are traveling in an automobile. You have taken this uh, unit in an automobile and uh, driven miles and miles and miles and still operated equipment at any destination or in the automobile while it's traveling. We've operated the 100, 200 watt light bulbs from the unit for extended periods of time while we were, we were in motion. Um, the units have been tested in aircraft. Um, they uh, 
produce very slight uh, uh, variances in, in output uh, in the air, but uh, generally don't affect the operation of the aircraft in any way. And they, they do perform well, uh, at least at an altitude of uh, 15,000 feet. Um, the units are not dependent on being close to the ground. They're, not, uh, they're no longer dependent on, uh, on their uh, uh, attitude in any way in regard to the horizon. Um, they simply uh, produce a great amount of electric power. Um, we can operate these devices through a variety of other inverters. Uh, or initially, the devices were designed and um, they were frequency sensitive. Uh, and they're still frequency sensitive, but uh, with the use of the trip light inverter, we've been able to um, power appliances now. And uh, you've seen the beginning of this tape, the uh, uh, operation of um, a thousand watts of power, basically, uh, the 10 light bulbs from the larger unit. Um, this unit is, is 12 ounces. Uh, don't have a scale here or I would measure it for you, but uh, the uh, basic size of the unit at 12 ounces and uh, the weight of the unit at 12 ounces and size at 6 inches and so forth, um, very compact. Uh, this particular unit is capable of putting out up to 7 amps. Uh, it needs, to, it needs uh, the use of a heat sink uh, for continuous operation at 7 amps. Um, but 7 amps of continuous DC output is more than enough to uh, create a uh, marvelous uh, portable uh, prime mover type of um, power as in uh, an electric automobile. Um, you, you could easily create an electric car using these kinds of power supplies here. This technology basically makes batteries obsolete. There would be no reason to have a battery to power an automobile or, or anything like that. You could use these devices. We have made larger devices which uh, put out an average of 20 amps of current at 1,000 volts. These devices could easily power uh, large industries and third world nations. Uh, it could even power uh, aircraft uh, without the use of fossil fuel, whatever it might have to be. And um, the uh, the basic point to all of this is that this is a new technology. It's an entirely new way of doing things. It is not a battery. It is not collecting energy from outer space. In fact, the technology utilized in this is, is very simple. Receiving new applying old engineering philosophies. There's nothing magic. This is not... Um, uh, you know, a, a technology which is basically uh, the equivalent of perpetual motion. It is not that at all. The power comes from a very viable source that we use every day, electromagnetic fields. The use of, of, of electromagnetism, or the use of a magnetic field to create electron flow in a wire is, is, has been around for hundreds of years, and it's what we use every day. And basically, that's what we're doing here. We are creating electron flow in, in wire. Uh, this device has... Uh, the ability to um, produce power uh, probably for uh, every uh, application that we have now today that utilizes batteries. This would replace, I would think, almost everything. Um, in, it is possible to utilize uh, uh, several of these units to create probably um, thousands of amps of current if necessary. You notice that the the device has been in operation for 20 solid minutes now. Um, there basically uh, uh, is no heat that's uh, too substantial from this unit now. Um, nothing, too, nothing too difficult. Uh, and I will, for one final time, measure the, the voltage output from this unit. So that you see it has not dropped significantly as it would if it were a battery. See, when you use batteries for a period of time, they uh, they go down a lot. And in this case, we're still we're looking at 169.1. We were at 170 volts 20 minutes ago. We're now at 169.2. 
So it's dropped just a little bit, but quite obviously it's it certainly has not dropped significantly as it would in the case of uh, if it were a battery firing. And the basic point is there there 